Hello, and thank you for joining us for this episode on premises liability. Premises liability is a big category of cases that involve a person being injured as a result of negligence on the property of another person or on the property of a business. Some of the most common premises liability cases involve injuries at a grocery store, a restaurant, an apartment complex, a bar or a club, or at a department store. When a person is injured or dies because of a property owner's negligence, the claim will likely be a premises liability claim. However, within premises liability, there are a lot of different types of cases, many of which you've probably heard of. In this video, we're going to be talking about the five most common types of premises liability cases in Florida. First, let's talk about slip and fall and trip and fall accidents. A slip and fall typically involves some sort of slippery substance or a slippery surface that causes somebody to fall and suffer injuries. Some of the most common slip and fall accidents involve a liquid on a smooth surface, like a juice or soapy water on the floor at a grocery store, or some sort of sauce on the floor at a restaurant. A slip and fall might also occur because a stair is missing the sandpaper or rubber strip that should be there to prevent accidents. Now let's talk about trip and falls. A trip and fall accident will typically involve a trip over an object or it may involve an improperly maintained or designed object or surface. Sometimes a trip and fall will occur because there is an uneven lip of pavement at the entrance of a convenience store. Other times, a trip and fall might occur because there is a folded rug that causes a person to fall. Or, a trip and fall may occur because there's a cable or cord that stretches across an area where people walk. Next, let's talk about amusement park accidents and theme park accidents. One of the best things about living in Orlando is our beautiful amusement parks. Whether we're talking about Disney or Universal or some other park, there are many places where a person or a family can escape for the day and have a great time. However, even though the amusement parks are great entertainment, there are a lot of hazards at amusement parks and theme parks, and so there's a lot of ways people can get hurt. For that reason, many premises liability claims are brought each year as a result of amusement park injuries. Many of these injuries are a result of slip and falls and trip and falls at the park. Others are a result of an improperly maintained ride. With all the people at the parks and with all the moving parts, it's inevitable that some people are going to get hurt. Now, let's talk about assault and negligent security. When a person gets attacked on the premises of a business or an apartment complex, the victim may have a claim for premises liability. You may have heard about this type of lawsuit. It's typically called a negligent security case. Some of the most common negligent security cases involve someone getting shot or stabbed at an apartment complex or at a hotel or motel. Another common type of negligent security case is where a person gets beat up and seriously injured at a bar or club. The basic premise of a negligent security claim is that the business owner, landowner, or apartment complex owner should have foreseen the harm the victim suffered. In other words, the landowner had some reason to know that people could be injured as a result of a criminal attack. Let's talk about animal attacks and dog bites. Many people have pets, and these pets are usually like a member of the family. Unfortunately, a lot of people are attacked every year by a dog or some other animal, and they suffer serious injuries as a result. In Florida, there is no one free bite rule like there is in other states. In other words, the dog owner can be held strictly liable for a dog bite, even if the dog had never displayed aggressive tendencies before. However, your case against the landowner could be even stronger if the owner knew that the dog had a tendency to attack people, because then the dog might be classified as a dangerous dog under Florida law. An owner of a dangerous dog in Florida is responsible for taking certain precautions to avoid people getting harmed by that dog. Failure to do so could result in liability for the owner. 
The final type of premises liability case we're going to talk about is elevator or escalator accidents. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm paranoid about elevators and escalators. One of my worst fears is to get stuck all day in an elevator. And every time before I step onto an escalator, I look down to check my shoelaces because I'm scared it'll catch my shoelaces and drag me in. My fears may be misplaced, but the reality is that every year thousands of people are injured on elevators and escalators. And somewhere around 30 people die every year from elevator or escalator accidents. Sometimes an elevator or escalator accident may be the result of a manufacturing or design defect. In those cases, the claim for damages would likely be a product liability claim. However, when the elevator or escalator accident occurs because the elevator or escalator was not properly maintained or inspected, then the injured person may have a premises liability claim against the owner or manager of the property. Thank you so much for watching this video on premises liability. If you enjoyed this type of content, please smash like and subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you at the next episode.